Mando Odu Child It could swallow you whole Think the shallow and safe Cause it's what we've been told Don't it feel like water Feel like water Don't it feel like water And it feels like water This documentary is about silencing the stereotypes and giving a voice to the voiceless. My name is uh, Ray Lee Deploy. I'm a fourth year Bachelor of Journalism student at Rhodes University, specializing in uh, videography and TV. I'm from Durban, South Africa. I like cycling and running and food and friends and family. I've never really told anybody about any of my experiences. I've never really come out to anybody but maybe one or two people and I think now it's time for me to kind of tell my story. To me rape is anything sexual that someone does to you or tries to perform on you and your body that you don't give them permission for. The truth is I don't really know um, when I realized the first time that I'd been sexually assaulted. I was very, very young. Somewhere in between the space of about three or four, I, I, my mom uh, enrolled me in a, in a swim school. It's somewhere that you drop your kid off and you expect that them to be, to be safe. And I never thought anything of it for a very long time and until a few years later when someone had pointed out to me that he had, you know, sexually assaulted people. I think I always knew, but I hid it. I suppressed it. I didn't know in my daily life, but somewhere in my body, in my mind, I knew that something had happened. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't know when I was a kid. I didn't understand. I think when you're a kid, you, you're not just naive, you, you're ignorant, you don't know anything. You, you don't know what sex is, so how can you know that you've been sexually assaulted? I never told my mom, I never told my dad. I think the truth is, like, it's funny, I'm making a documentary about stereotypes around men and how they should actually open up, but at the same time, I'm kind of scared to tell my dads which is against the stereotype. But I suppose that's why I'm making this documentary. I'm also exploring, um, you know, how to get rid of those own stereotypes within my mind. Um, but the person that I originally told um, was a friend of mine named Josh. Him and I grew up in Durban together. And uh, him and I actually arrived at Rhodes University together, stayed and raised together in the same room. And uh, him and I are connected by the same swim school. So um, we, you know, that sexual assault happened. So, yeah, um, I think you just got to start with one person and work your way up from there. My name is Josh, uh, Joshua, and my name means God is salvation. I think I can define rape to be when your whole body is given over to someone without your consent. It happened at a swim school, just at a normal swimming pool inside the house. The Inside the pool, actually, <laughs> that's, that, that is how even, in the pool. I just remember being very excited to go swimming. That was one of my, my, my favorite memories. I was like, oh, I'm going to go swimming now. And um, yeah, that's what I, I, I really wanted to do. He took advantage over me. I only remember that I was assaulted last year. How did my mind forget that I was like men can also um, be sexually assaulted you, you hear the narrative that it's only females who get sexually assaulted or get raped um, but it's it's both it's men and women I didn't so make I a video series about it to the swimming lessons he would touch my leg yeah it was a very cathartic experience to lay out my whole life preschool 
Wow, look at those hands. hands. Wait, huh? what, what is he doing? It wow. helped me deal with uh, all the anger that I had and I did it. And um, yeah, I like a, I'm not angry anymore. I'm searching for the truth. Consent. Someone in my family watched the series. And after I had told my story, they disagreed with me. They said that was not it. That did not happen to you. It did happen to me because it is my story. So how can you tell me what happened to me? Don't I know what happened to me? <laughs> isn't it my body that was, this went through? That isn't good for healing because you need to be validated. So thank goodness it isn't a human that I had confided in. It was God that I confided in. And yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think that I've forgiven them. And then sometimes my body is doing something else. <laughs> sometimes it's agitated. Sometimes it's angry and i'm like come stop it shh, shh, miss love <laughs> and it's so hard to love um because sometimes it's easier to hate i'm not a victim but i am but i'm not <laughs> it's a very weird hybrid space um uh, because i'm not gonna live in fear like always I'm, uh, I'm tired of being in fear i just want to live my life dealing with sexual assault is difficult i think it's as much as you you grow in how you feel about it, and you grow in how you deal with the emotions that come up when you think about it. Uh, in, in the same way, how you deal with it physically and mentally grows. You, you learn what works, you learn how to feel better. Um, you, sometimes you have to learn how to feel bad instead of burying it down. Even when I'm not trying to deal with it, I am dealing with it. Telling your story is good for yourself and it's good for other people because for yourself, you have to seek validation. I think it's a big part of healing. Go for counseling, tell a friend, tell a family member. And then by telling your story, you number one, inspire other people to, to grow and become stronger. You could perhaps prevent a situation because someone knows better or understands um, yeah, you have to tell somebody and you don't necessarily have to tell the world. Like I'm telling the world through a documentary. That's kind of scary for some people. You might want to just tell people and be anonymous. Our anonymous individual codenamed Hercules after the Greco-Roman hero famous for his strength shares his story. Um, I'm a student at Rhodes, I'm a student I'm from King Williamstown born and bred, um, 23 years old. So for me, I'd say rape is any sexual intercourse that uh, maybe one of the two did not consent to. I didn't feel like um, I was sexually abused my entire life because I'm, I'm a man, so we are told by our society. A lot of guys go through that, but those stories are not told because we're told that we're men, we're supposed to be strong, we're supposed to uh, man up. But those things, they actually affect you. And for me, it was a family member, like a family relative, same clan name, same, same name, but not the same house. And it was not only me, me and my cousins. And we liked it at that time because we thought it was cool. Shit, we're getting sex. But the girl was old. She was in her teenage years. And we were around about seven, eight. So last year, that's when I realized that actually this happened to me. I was not depressed. I was not thinking about it. The only time I would think about it, well, at that age, it would be, it's a fun thing to do because it's what guys talk about. So it's a, it's a nice thing. It happens. And if you are a guy, it's an achievement. I'm actually feeling it now, like the pain that um, I would say I suppressed because of the stereotype, because of the societal standards. My entire life, I suppressed that feeling. Only last year, I got to feel like, shit, now I feel like a victim. The first thing that came to mind was, what could have, um, or how could this experience have influenced uh, this person that I am today? Only this year, I got to speak about it 
I was speaking with, with my girlfriend and I was like, shit, there's something that I've never actually told anyone. And I don't know how it affected me. I've been trying to think. I'm just making assumptions now based on, on the things that I read, based on um, other people's experiences. And then I'm like, actually, I can relate to that. I think this character of me may have been um, a result of that experience. I began questioning myself a lot. But one thing that I think um, I was more concerned about were the young kids, like young boys who are still growing up. There's probably a lot that are going through what I went through, what um, a lot of guys went through but kept quiet. Yeah, so, so during um, this conversation with my girlfriend and, and, and we actually tried to unpack and we sort of had like a review in our sexual life also and and how i i am as a person like sexually and i had to reflect also to my sexual history and the current but one thing that seemed to be constant is my dominance how i i love to be dominant in in, 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 in that space. I don't want to, to feel powerless. I don't want to feel um, overpowered. I don't feel any anger towards her. I don't hate her. I'm cool with her. So the letter would go um, like, I'm old now. I know what you did to me was wrong. And you know it too. I hope we were the last victims and there was no one else after us. And I hope you realize that what you did to us was wrong. I've had experiences in clubs and stuff where I've had people, mostly women actually, grope me and um, one girl actually, you know, in a bathroom kind of coming in and and trying to take advantage of me, which for a long time I kind of felt very embarrassed about. This documentary is in no way supposed to be a movement um, against Me Too or a counter. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a branch of Me Too. We're trying to give men a platform to tell their stories. And at the same time, the patriarchy that, that kind of left women speechless or voiceless about their sexual assaults has deemed men to be sexual animals. And it kind of, people think like we want sex all the time. You know, that's, that's what, we've, what we've been bred to believe. But that's not the case. We don't want you to grow up us in the club, please. Like, it's not fun to have your genitalia grabbed. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's not, it's not as heinous, it's not as violent as an assault against women. There's a power imbalance. Men are stronger a lot of the time. They, they overpower women. So I'm not talking about like being violently raped. It happens. Women can be stronger than men genetically. But I'm talking about just we don't, we're not sexual animals. We really, really do not want to be grabbed in a club. Like, please don't do it. Please. I didn't really ever seek help. I think I, I, when I didn't know what it was, I didn't seek help because I didn't know I needed help. And when I knew what it was, I was scared. I eventually told a friend. They reacted exactly how you would want someone to react. This person had been through kind of like what I had been through. They, had, they, they were in the exact same swim school I was in. They had arguably been through more than I had been through. And they came from a place of understanding and love and they really helped me. They just said, look, it's not your fault. I'm sorry that it happened. Talk about it. Don't it feel like water? Feel like water? Don't it feel like water? It feels like water?